Good morning, everyone. What is organizational mindfulness? I invite everyone to taste it and then open their mind because this is the quality that it allows. It opens your mind to become curious, non-judgmental. My goals are first to inform, to inform people in organizations about the benefits of mindfulness, the connection to neuroscience, to neuroplasticity, disengagement, stress, happiness, well-being, and then inspire others by facilitating, even from my personal story and from success stories of my clients, to start practicing because without practicing it's very hard to achieve this quality of presence. It's like going to the gym of your brain and implement because it's very, very important that we have responsibilities to practice as individuals, but we have to implement that in an organizational culture. So how do we do that, right? How do we provide the tools and make sure that it's implemented in the organizational culture? But I would like to introduce you a few of the tools that I've developed throughout my work in the organizational field. Let's start with the first one. Mindful decision making. Are you feeling reactive or predictive with your responsiveness level? How is your brain reactive to all this, you know, distractions and, you know, workload that is coming from various channels and bombarding your brain? We all suffer from ADT, attention deficit trait. Are you familiar with that? It's the cousin of ADD and ADHD. ADT is not genetic anymore, caused mainly by the environment, technology, which causes us, you know, impulsive reactions, over responsiveness, automatic behavior. Uh, we often get into avoidance mode because we are, you know, sometimes we're just overwhelmed by all those stress and those stressors coming in. And so we are avoiding. Mindfulness helps us to be more open and let's avoid these stressors and these distractions. This is the model for mindful decision making that really helps managers to check in for one minute and ask yourself before they respond, ask yourself, is there a better way? If better, okay? That's the idea of if better. And how do we use this if better model for cyber slacking at work. Mindful. Just asking yourself, why do I need my phone right now? When you understand, when you're about to take your phone, which emotion are you trying to avoid? Start to, you know, get acquainted with yourself, right? Mindfulness helps us to be familiar with ourselves and to love ourselves, to embrace ourselves. Is it because of boredom, anxiety, or even loneliness? It's a big, you know, a big reason to grab your phone. Who believes that multitasking is good for you? I think multitasking is essential. We can't avoid multitasking, right? It also helps sometimes creativity, mind wandering. Sometimes you leave one idea, you go back to it with fresh mind, right? So we have allowed manager to experience a different notion of multitasking and unitasking with unitasking days. And what does it mean? First of all, we invite people to start noticing their intention for every single day. Taking 15 minutes at night to plan the day ahead, right? Can really make a difference in your unitasking and multitasking activities. If you know what you want for the upcoming days, you can Mindfully choose your distractions, right? First of all, you want to choose what you want to do. But then you can also choose your distractions if you have clarity, if your intention is clear for the upcoming day and for the upcoming week. Some people plan their week. And this is the beauty of mindfulness. When you allow yourself time with people, with tasks, with ideas, you can go deeper and deeper. And Every hour you should ask yourself, what do I really want or need to be doing right now? Because every hour things can change, right? The world is changing constantly. 
And this is choosing your distractions mindfully. Mindful meetings, this is a, quite a popular tool that has been endorsed by many in the corporate world. It all starts with the planning, with the intention, with the person who is inviting people to come to the meeting. He has to be very mindful of who needs to be there and what should be achieved and should brief them, those people, to understand what they're gonna do while they have this one hour meeting. Because it can be just a waste of time. And this is my main concern because it, it can be a waste of time, but it can be the best time. And people can flourish, they can be engaged. It's all a matter of approach and their quality of presence. So it does require a lot of work, this aspect of mindful meeting in organizations. And I've developed this tool that is called mindful meeting. So it's like a check-in before you enter a meeting. There is a flow to it. So open the card and I will show you what you need to do. Ask yourself, even before entering the next workshop. Okay, ask yourself, where is my attention? Okay, guys, so we have arrived to the last tool, mindful feedback tool. Often we're very much attached to what's really going on now and we forget the panoramic view of things. We forget our intention, we forget to be non-judgmental with the person sitting in front of us because we're carrying lots of judgmental voices and um, past conflict behavior that is not aligned with what we believe is. So research shows that employees prefer not to receive feedback from their managers due to concerns regarding trust, fairness and vulnerability. Mindful feedback is bringing not only your IQ, also your EQ. It's called IQ and EQ exercise. So what we're gonna experience, it's a mix of mindful listening and mindful feedback. Sometimes in the workplace, employees and managers, they just want to be heard. And this is a very effective tool, mindful listening for managers to allow your employee to be fully listened because to be present with them is the best present you can give them, right? With empathy, with an intention of what you want to get out of this feedback session, you can really transform relationships in a short way and effective way. Mindful listening also is a gift. If you listen in this quality of presence to anyone, they feel someone has been listening to them, have been present in a non-judgmental way. And mindful listening also allows you to feel things when you're focused only on the other person, okay? Without your thoughts, you know, you're identifying when your mind is wandering and you bring it back to listening. Then things emerge like gut feelings, like empathy. You know, when you're just listening on the go, you can't feel anything because you're doing it automatically. You don't allow your emotional state to be unleashed. And this is what we want to achieve. Thank you. I really enjoyed here. I believe that 